Hi, my name is Tim Mitchell. I am a certified PGA teaching professional uh, that teaches full-time at the beautiful Pelican Hill Golf Club on the Newport coast of California. And I'm here today to try and give you an idea about how to try and make your golf swing more effortless, uh, make it more powerful, uh, make it look easy. I think we all love watching Rory McIlroy, Fred Couples, Ernie Els, each one of those generational players makes their uh, golf motion just look so simple, so efficient, so powerful, so effortless. And I want to try and just give you one very basic concept today uh, to encourage that idea. And then I'm also going to give you a place where that usually breaks down or a place where I want you to kind of look at that immediately as to why you might struggle with achieving this concept. So let's talk about that effortlessness, uh, effortless -less. Let's talk about that effortless power, uh, that effortless sequence of a, a golf swing. Um, you know, the really neat thing about those three players that I mentioned from beforehand is that their sequencing, their ability to use gravity uh, uh, to their uh, ultimate advantage is what makes their golf swings look so simple, so efficient. And so I want to give you a concept uh, of how to try and achieve that. And I want you to start off with a heavy club. This is momentous. You can also grab two or three of your own golf clubs too, just depending on your own level of strength. And take a backswing and get to the top part of your backswing. And this is where gravity can really kind of have a neat place in your golf swing. Is that we all know if I stood here right now and dropped this golf club, the golf club gradually increases in speed as it starts to drop down towards the ground. It doesn't start with ultimate speed here at the moment that I drop it. It achieves its maximum speed the moment that it touches ground or makes impact. We want that same concept to translate to when we make impact with the golf ball. So, if I grab my tool here again, and I get to the top part of my backswing, here's my concept for you, right? I want you to feel like the first part of your downswing is the red light, where you just kind of allow gravity to slowly start your downswing se sequence. When you get somewhere around this quadrant right here, right around when your left arm gets parallel to the ground, that's maybe your yellow light, okay? Where now you're starting to get ready to add your, ax your, your, your multiple effort and speed. And then by the time that your golf club gets here, right around shaft parallel to the ground, that's when we want to try and take full advantage of the slow gathering of speed and add as much additional oomph and gusto that you possibly can. Now, everybody's a little different. So anywhere, in my opinion, between this yellow light and this green light sequence is where you should be adding that extra power, but never, ever from trying to do it from the very top part of your backswing. Okay. Now, why do so many of us struggle with that concept? And to me, it comes down to one really huge component. And there is more than that. So let's just say that I'm going to discuss one major component. That is, where is my club face throughout my downswing sequence? Okay. So if I now spin around here a little bit and I get to the top part of my backswing, if I play from an open face position, however I do it, whether I have wrists that are in an extended position, whether I grab the golf club from a weak position, whether I grab the club face from an open face position like this. However it happens, when I swing the golf club down, and if I have that golf club in an open face position, if I try and have that gradual acceleration, I'm not giving, that, not giving my athlete that much time to be able to square up the club face. Right now that club face is wide open in my opinion, and for me to be able to close up that club face in three feet of, uh, three feet of distance in less than two tenths of a second, if I'm able to swing the golf club myself, you know, with my six or seven iron, uh, somewhere in the high 80 mile uh, an hour range, that puts a ton of stress on my athlete. So what does my athlete usually do, right? He tries to actually create speed early because when I do that, it helps me, as you can see here now, squared up the club face sooner. So if you're struggling with this concept, if you feel like you're always casting, if you feel like you're always too fast from the top, look at your club face. That could be the biggest component that's making it challenging for you to have that effortless, great sequenced golf swing that Rory McIlroy has, Ernie Els has, Fred Couples has. 
you have any questions about this concept, please feel free to uh, uh, add some comments down below in the video. And I hope this is very impactful for your golf game. Continued success. So let's take a look at one of, com one of Ernie Els' components of effortless power. Uh, it's his sequencing. It's his gradual acceleration. And I want you to see here right now we're at the top part of Ernie's uh, downswing. As he starts his downswing and that red circle clicks, you're going to see that when we stop with Ernie's left arm parallel to the ground, right here, 1.76 units of time has transpired. That's not seconds. Uh, Ernie's entire golf swing doesn't last more than 1.76 seconds from the moment he starts his backswing to impact. But 1.76 units is the amount of time that's taking place from the part of the backswing to this moment uh, in the downswing. Okay. And as we continue downwards here too as well to the next spot, look how 0.73 units of time has now taken place. Interesting. Not perfect, but pretty darn close to twice as uh, fast to, uh, as the previous segment. Okay. So let's continue that sequence one more time. And now we're getting to impact, which is 0.4 units or 40 units of time. So that's something that's kind of a, a unique thing that we see with Ernie and with a lot of touring professionals is that their golf club continues to gradually accelerate. And if you take a closer look at those numbers, that's almost the pattern of the sequence is that it gets twice as fast with each successive segment. So I hope that this helps, right? I hope that, number one, you see this visual sequence. You see the red box, the yellow box, the green box, right? Those segments of when we're trying to increase or how we're trying to increase our, uh, uh, our speed throughout our downswing, as well as the concept of the heavy club, as well as the concept of utilizing gravity. All of those components can hopefully give you a wonderful game plan uh, on how to have effortless power, effortless energy, great sequencing in your golf swing. Best of luck.